I'm Dr. Joseph Puerto Rico, and I'm a surgeon at Hartford HealthCare. Our vision is to be most trusted for personalized, coordinated care. With the changing healthcare landscape, organizations are being tasked to rethink the way they deliver care with the goal of doing what is best for our patient to achieve the greatest outcome. Hartford HealthCare has identified care redesign as a strategic priority and has launched the Clinical Care Redesign Program. The CCR program utilizes quality outcomes to determine opportunities to improve performance, reduce clinical variation, and reduce cost of care in specific service lines. To stay at the forefront of healthcare innovation and quality, our clinical teams have been working to enhance the recovery process for surgical patients by implementing best practices and sharing strategies for patients to be in their best condition prior to arriving to the hospital. This video will help prepare you for surgery and provide the necessary tools to make you an active participant of your care. I'm Dr. Christine Bardis, a colorectal surgeon at Hartford HealthCare. Our team is excited to share a program called Enhanced Recovery After Surgery for Colorectal Surgery. We will share strategies to help you prepare for surgery and aid in your recovery to return to life faster. You are the most important member of the healthcare team. Throughout your experience, you'll meet a dynamic team that includes everyone involved from the surgeon to the anesthesia provider, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, nurses, therapists, and the office staff. We know that colorectal surgery can be stressful on the body. You may feel some discomfort after surgery. Our team has a coordinated plan to keep you comfortable. This will include using a combination of different medications and minimizing the use of opiates to achieve good pain control. By following a few simple steps, we are determined to provide you a safe and comfortable experience. Just like an athlete preparing for the big game, you are in training for your surgery. To minimize the loss of strength and endurance that often occurs during recovery, you want to be as strong as you can be before your surgery. The best way to do that is by walking. Walking is an easy way to increase activity. In addition, you should eat a healthy diet consisting of fruits, vegetables, and protein. This will help your body heal faster, regain strength, and fight infection. It's also important that you stay hydrated, so make sure to drink, preferably six eight-ounce glasses of water per day. If you're a smoker, you should stop at least four weeks before your surgery, or at the very least, cut back. To help you recover more quickly, it's also a good idea to limit any alcohol consumption before surgery. A good state of mind is crucial, so stay positive. The more relaxed and confident you are before your surgery, the better your chances are for an easier recovery. During your office visit, your surgeon will discuss the reasons for considering surgery, surgical options, potential risks and complications, as well as alternatives to surgical intervention. During this visit, you may be asked to answer questions about your medical history, review your current medications, complete a physical exam, have an EKG or lab work. You'll also be asked to sign the informed consent for surgery you'll basically be learning everything you'll need to do to prepare for your surgery. You will also receive a handbook, which will reinforce the information we are sharing with you today. Recovery starts at home, and there are a few simple things you can do to optimize your health before coming to the hospital. Our goal here is to get you in the best possible shape before your surgery. Fill all routine prescriptions in advance. Prepare meals that can be frozen ahead of time. Remove any objects from your home that might cause you to trip. Place things that you use often at waist height to avoid reaching movements. Make arrangements for walking pets or picking up the mail. And arrange transportation to the hospital. You'll want to stop taking vitamins, supplements, and herbal remedies three days before surgery. Also stop taking aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen seven days before surgery. If you are taking prescription pain medications, let your surgical provider know so that we can have a special plan in place for your pain control during your visit. Do not use recreational drugs 10 days before your surgery. 
Check with your primary care provider or specialist regarding instructions for taking blood thinners and diabetes medications. The day before surgery, do not eat solid food or milk products after midnight. You may drink clear fluids such as broth, water, or pulp-free juice up until one hour before your arrival. If you have diabetes, your glucose levels may vary more than usual as you prepare for surgery. A nurse will call you the day before your surgery to tell you what time to arrive at the hospital. If a bowel prep is required, follow your surgical provider's instructions. Colorectal surgery patients should consume a carbohydrate drink one hour prior to arrival at the hospital. Once at the hospital, you will be weighed and your blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature will be checked. The nurse will review your medical history and perform a complete skin assessment. You will then be moved to the operating room where you will be connected to monitoring equipment, compression devices on your legs to prevent blood clots, and an IV through which you will receive antibiotics. The anesthesia provider will help you to fall asleep with medicine given through your IV. Once you are asleep, a plastic breathing tube may be placed into your mouth to help you breathe during surgery. After the surgery is complete, you will be taken to the recovery area, where specially trained nurses will care for you as you wake up from anesthesia. You will be asked to rate your pain level on a scale of 0 to 10 a combination of medications to help control your post-operative pain will enable you to get up earlier and recover more quickly. Your catheter will be removed as soon as your surgical provider feels it is appropriate. It is not uncommon to have pink-tinged urine or a burning sensation with urination. This will go away in a day or so. Nursing staff will check your blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature often. While in bed, Compression devices will be placed on your legs to help prevent blood clots. Staying active will be important for your recovery. Walking as soon as the day of surgery will help get your body back to its normal rhythm and overall make you feel better. As they say, if you don't move it, you lose it. To prevent complications such as pneumonia, blood clots, and muscle weakness after surgery, use your muscles. Maintaining your strength will be important. If you're in bed, try these exercises as soon as you wake up and throughout your stay. For ankle pumps and ankle circles, move your ankle up and down slowly. Then clockwise and counterclockwise slowly. For quad sets, tighten the muscle on the front of your thigh by pressing the back of your knee into the bed. Hold it for five seconds. For glute sets, straighten your legs and squeeze your buttocks together. Hold it for 5 seconds. For heel slides, slowly bend your knee, hold it for 5 seconds, and lower slowly. Following these next guidelines will minimize the amount of pressure on your incisions and avoid increasing your pain. Remember, it's important to breathe. To get out of bed using the leg roll method, roll onto your side, knees bent, move your feet off the bed, and push yourself up to sit. Sit on the side of the bed before standing. For getting into bed, sit on the bed towards the top. Sit deep into the mattress with your calves touching the bed. Lower down to your elbow and then shoulder. Then lift your legs with your knees bent. Finally, roll to your back with your knees bent. Some patients may experience nausea after surgery. If you feel queasy, please notify your nurse. After surgery, your bowel may temporarily stop working. This is called an ileus. Walking soon after surgery and decreasing the use of narcotics will often help to prevent an ileus and allow you to recover more quickly. Wound infections may occur after surgery. Washing your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is the best way to help prevent infections. Deep venous thrombosis is a blood clot in the vein. The biggest danger is a clot that breaks off and travels to the lungs. This is called a pulmonary embolism and it can be life-threatening. You should know the signs. For a clot in the arms or legs, you may have pain, swelling, redness, warmth, 
or numbness and tingling. For a clot in the lungs, you may have difficulty breathing, chest pain, or a fast heart rate. To prevent blood clots, you should avoid sitting or lying in one position for long periods of time. Stretch your legs and walk. Wear your sequential compression devices while in the hospital. And take blood thinners such as heparin, Lovenox, and aspirin as prescribed by your care team. Before you leave the hospital, you'll be given a copy of your home instructions, a list of medications and prescriptions that you will need, and instructions on when to follow up with your surgical provider. Before you go home, be sure to collect all of your belongings and expect to have a follow-up appointment with your surgical provider. At your follow-up appointment, you will discuss when you may return to driving, work, and your usual activities. Now that you're home, it's imperative that you continue to participate in your recovery by eating small, high-protein meals, staying hydrated, walking three to four times daily, and taking your medications as prescribed. After you leave the hospital, you should call your surgical provider if you have a fever higher than 101.5 degrees, vomiting, redness or drainage from your incision, abdominal pain that is not controlled by pain medication, no passage of gas for more than 48 hours, leg pain, dizziness or feeling faint while standing, or frequent watery diarrhea. Should you have an ostomy, you will be provided with special education. Drink plenty of water to avoid dehydration and eat a well-balanced diet, avoiding foods like broccoli, cauliflower, and garlic. Ileostomy patients should measure their stool output as instructed by hospital staff. Preparing and recovering from surgery is a multi-layered process, and it's vitally important that you play a part in that process. By actively participating in the Enhanced Recovery After Surgery program, you will be well prepared for your surgery and able to get back to your life much sooner. We hope this video has helped prepare you for what lies ahead in your healthcare experience. We at Hartford Healthcare hope that your experience is a positive one. Thank you for watching.